right, welcome back to part three of installing that big 400 gallon Bowfront Aquarium. We're at the point now where we've got this tank on the stand and we've got it pushed up against the back of the wall. Jim, Bowfront cabinet guy, is in the process of um, assembling or completing the electrical there. And that'll end up being four uh, 20 amp outlets. Um, and this is on its own dedicated circuit which connects downstairs. As soon as he's done with the electrical, we're going to mount or attach the back side of the stand to the wall, and then at that point we can begin to assemble uh, the filter system inside the tank. You can see we've already pulled through the power cords for the lighting. Um, not a whole lot of space on the back side of the tank, so that could present us with some little issues down the road, but um, for now, just kind of keep moving forward. So tell us, what do you got going on here with the electrical, Jim? Uh, I'm not talking to you, I'm hungry. Uh-huh. Well, like this guy told you, there's a... Uh, it's past 12 o'clock and he hasn't fed me again. It's only 11.30. You know, you viewers, really, this guy's a slave driver, doesn't pay me anything. I told you oh. there were granola bars in the van. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I don't think he uh, needs to eat anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all in good fun. All right. right. Yep. So we'll just have this done, and we'll go get something to eat. And are you buying? Uh, I guess I'm buying. Any way to <laughs> shut your ass? Woohoo! Did you hear that, everybody? He's buying. <laughs> Whole crew. Not just me. <laughs> McDonald's Happy Meals. Oh yeah. <laughs> All around. <laughs> I'm not splitting another Happy Meal. Yeah, you are. <laughs> no, you're just splitting the Pepsi. <laughs> or the fries. Ugh. So anyways, the ground's very important for us. Jim does not, should use a GFI in this situation, but um, it's good to use a GFI, but with this kind of aquarium, and, and it's, it's a it's, worse thing if something shuts down. Exactly. It's almost a little too sensitive. I mean, yeah. I understand the safety issue and such, but I, I don't need um, some safety thing shutting down the aquarium for some unnecessary little right, issue. Right. But technically, you should have it, but it's... Man, if you want to lose, some people put thousands of dollars in this stuff. And to have a GFI shot down while you're at work is the worst possible thing that can happen. Yeah. Um, anyways, I'm not talking anymore until I get to you. Okay, just keep working then. Once we have the electrical outlets installed, we can begin to assemble the filter system. This system, like most of mine, consists actually of two systems. Yeah. One that provides biological sterilization and refrigeration. The second intended for high flow internal circulation and mechanical filtration. But first, we need to complete the electrical. Yes, we were bantering about Jim buying lunch, cheap bastard. He's talking about us sharing Happy Meals, right? Isn't that right? We're unionizing. We want a Happy Meal each. Yes, each. And your own set of fries as opposed to everybody Make digging sure out of the same box. You guys keep the toy, I keep the food. <laughs> you guys can share the toy. Kids play with the <laughs> you just want the hamburger toy. Yeah. Yeah. What was that little purple blob for hamburger? What was it? Did you guys remember I know, that? I know the blob, yeah. The purple blob? Yeah. And while we're waiting, Condi and I will unwrap the large wet dry trickle filter. Everybody knows I have a fondness for this very effective biological filter. And this setup, being a fish-only system, I feel is the best choice for my application. It highly aerates the water and is not affected by copper-based medications, which at some point I expect to have to use, being a fish-only system. I, we're going in, we're going about this the wrong way. It's and as we way. slide the large filter yeah, into the stand, it appears to not oh, fit. So we move down to the other end of the stand and slide the filter into the stand. Go to the wall. Well, Maybe we can gain a few inches if we come through the openings in the center of the stand. I think we're going to have to go through this door. It'll give us at least a couple more inches. Okay, come on.
and it quickly becomes apparent that the large wet dry trickle filter is not going to fit into the stand. But not wanting to believe that, I have to try. And my attempt is to turn the filter on its side and see if I can gain a few inches that I need. Part of the trick with this attempt is to not allow the bio balls to spill out of the filter. So let's see if we can squeeze this filter in. I think so. Yeah. Ah, son of a bitch. Okay, slide her back out. Um, what happens if you were to elevate that in? How about one more final attempt? Well, I gotta admit, I didn't expect this. Didn't consider it at all. And the irony is, it's not the first time I've been in this situation. You know what? This should have gone in for the deck when I'm top of the stand. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is MyFishTank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. For a limited time only, LA Fish Guys t-shirts are back. Whether it's gear for cleaning your own aquarium or one-upsmanship with your friends, these quality Hanes BVTs are 100% pre-strung cotton. My three color LA Fish Guys logos are silk screened onto the back and front chest area of the shirts. Three sizes, medium, large, and extra large. Go to LAFishGuys.com and click on the t-shirt link to order your LA Fish Guys t-shirts today. So you say these are glued in? Mm-hmm. Those won't come out. All of this is glued and screwed. Every bit of it. It won't come out without doing severe damage. Um, we won't make the turn either. Even if we took the tank off, we're not going to make it. It's right. not going to make the turn. Right. Knowing that the filter has no other place than inside the cabinet, we begin to explore alternative options. Um, the back of this. You cut out a back piece of it. Don't recommend it. But how hard is it to get a smaller jump? Two weeks. I don't really want to put the job off. Um, this bat doesn't come off? No, it's glued. You can cut into it. I don't have a rotor zip with me, but we could cut into it. 
If you recall, there are the horizontal supports that were shimmed up earlier on the underside of the deck, and those would inhibit us from coming through the top of the stand. I don't know if that's going to give us enough room to poke in there. It has to be at an angle. It has to be from this side because the plugs and everything. It has to be from this side. Well, your options are a smaller sump, or we pull this whole thing away from the wall again. And I don't have a rotor zip with me because I didn't plan on doing any cut. I didn't think I needed any. It was cut. And, and how much are we going to have to cut out in the back to be able to get this? We're going to have to cut out whatever the size of this thing is just so we can slide it through it. And we wouldn't have to pull it all the way away from the wall. We still would have to disconnect the electrical, yeah. unscrew it. Uh -huh. Pull it away from the wall, uh -huh. cut the hole out of the back, uh -huh. slide it in this way so we can get behind it, beyond that point, turn it, and yeah. How big a hole? Whatever the size of this thing is. 18 by 18 by, I think it's 18 by 18 by 18, okay. isn't it? You're talking an awful lot to cut out. 18, 18. 18. It's 18 by 18. And where are you going to cut the hole? I have to cut a hole in the back. Where? Right where uh, he's sitting, just about. Okay, well, if you, if I'm looking, what do you mean where he's sitting? Actually, what I would do is I take this, I'd come to this side, cut a hole in the back there. Okay. So leaving can... solid wood around your electrical area. Yeah. And the cutout is over there. Yeah. And then it would be gone. You have a wall behind it. Well, we can. Put the piece of wood back there. Uh, uh, could we? Yeah, yeah but it'll, it'll go all the way Is there back. something that can hold it? I mean, the filter going place, but I'm just trying to think of protecting the wall. And what'll happen is it'll just because this cabinet's not a wall. Once we cut it out, it's gone. Um, putting the piece back in, can we use some staples of some sort just to hold it in place, or what kind of screw? There is something. We don't have enough space. We have to cut it. We have to cut it. Right. We'd have to put some sort of back filler to hold the screws to hold no. it together. Right. What other than a roto zip can be used to uh, skill saw? Roto zip would be the best though. What's a roto? I mean, I don't mind buying a two bucks. Ninety bucks. That's what it calls. I mean, that's the whole point of getting this equipment in here. Yeah. If we'd gone to lunch and come back and found this, I would have been. We'd be in trouble, right? Okay. Um, here's a typical situation where the filter is, is too big to fit through the front of the aquarium stand. Um, and unlike a lot of aquarium stands that to keep the price down, they don't put a back on the stand. In this particular case, cabinet guys, and I've been down this road before, this won't be the first time, uh, tend to put solid backs on the stand to give it additional support. Well, the problem with a solid back is it doesn't allow me that flexibility to push something all the way through. So what we're going to have to do to get this filter to fit in there is either buy a new shorter filter, and that's going to be two weeks down the road, and I don't want to postpone the job. Um, the alternative is we have to cut a hole in the stand, or in the back of the stand, so we can poke the filter through to the back of the stand enough to get the front end to clear. The opening on the front side of the stand. So, since our uh, bow front cabinet guy didn't bring all of his tools, uh, we'll have to go buy some kind of a skill saw or a, a handheld router so we can cut that out. So, I guess um, instead of going to um, a fancy restaurant for lunch, it's it's back to McDonald's <laughs> with these guys. Blame it on having, the cabinet guy. Yeah. Blame it on the cabinet guy. Gonna share. It's uh, the guy that did the designing of the equipment. Uh, it's the yeah. cabinet. Whose job was to bring tools? Listen, point the finger. Point the finger. Let me get out the Oh yeah, let's go eat lunch. What do they say? A skunk always smells his own stink first. <laughs> Okay, so once again, you know, Jim blames somebody else. It's 12.30, we haven't eaten breakfast or lunch. Uh, he made a missed measurement on his sump, blamed someone else, and now we're all gonna starve for it. He wants us to stay here and keep working. No, we need to eat. He's gotta cut this out. I am hungry this time. And so here's the can of beef. We haven't put the can of beef on yet. Uh, Cause now we're gonna pull the whole tank away, pull the electrical out. 
and uh, kind of sets us back a couple hours. Yeah, you know, whatever. Whatever it takes to get it done. That's what